This week we shall learn about antithesis. Write down the term and the definition in your bell ringer book. And please take note of the pronunciation of the term. It's antithesis, not antithesis. In the Glossary of Literary Terms by Abrams, we read that antithesis is a contrast or opposition in the meanings of contiguous phrases or clauses that manifest parallelism, that is, a similar word order and structure in their syntax. Hmm, what does that mean in plain and simple English? In short, antithesis means the direct opposite. In this cartoon, the antithesis is evident in the speech bubble. As politicians, one leans too far to the left and the other too far to the right. Do you see how the sentence structure is mirrored? Too far to the left and too far to the right? This is called parallelism. In 1969, Neil Armstrong was the first human to set foot on the moon. And when his words were beamed back to Earth, he used antithesis in his famous line, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. The syntax juxtaposes the one small step with one giant leap and man with mankind. I'm so old that I remember the excitement of the moon landing, with my family gathered around the radio in my granddad's kitchen, eagerly listening to the news being broadcast from the United States. I definitely thought that we'd have colonies on the moon and other planets by now. Let's look at some examples from the world of literature. Here's one from the writings of the English poet Alexander Pope. To err is human, to forgive divine. This means that as humans we make mistakes, but the power to forgive those mistakes is divine, from God. Here's another well-known example of antithesis from Paradise Lost by John Milton. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Gosh, that would make a good tattoo, don't you think? And another example from the world of classic literature, from the novel A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Do you see that the syntax of this sentence is such that the two clauses are similar and just the words best and worst are different? This ambiguity will certainly draw the attention of the reader as we ask ourselves what could be best and worst at the same time. You might be thinking that this sounds very similar to paradox, and you'd be correct. Both contain opposites used together for effect, but in antithesis, it is the structure of the sentence that is important, the parallel syntax. Paradoxes are often just simple statements expressing a truth. You might also think that antithesis sounds like an oxymoron. Again, you need to look at the syntax. In an oxymoron, the opposite ideas are often expressed as two single words next to one another. For example, a bittersweet experience or a working holiday or an open secret. In antithesis, these opposite ideas are not usually next to one another. All three of these terms, antithesis, paradox and oxymoron, have to do with contrasting ideas. 
while antithesis refers to a statement which contains two opposite ideas and a contrast that makes logical sense, paradox refers to a situation which contains two opposite ideas but the contrast doesn't seem to make logical sense until we understand the context. Oxymoron is the mini version of a paradox as it's usually a short phrase which contains two words of opposite meaning. And like paradox, the contrast doesn't seem to make logical sense until we understand the context. Here are examples that illustrate the differences. Contrast, a simple examination of two opposite ideas. It's possible to love the taste of ice cream while hating the fact that it's bad for you. Antithesis. You can see here how the parallel syntax has been used, an adverb qualifying an adjective, nutritionally deficient and spiritually nourishing. Paradox. This doesn't seem to make sense that the ice cream is so good that it's evil. But we understand what the speaker or writer means with that sentence. And oxymoron. The opposite words are next to one another. Wonderfully evil. And now you know more about antithesis and you'll always be able to pronounce it correctly.